Hi, everyone. Welcome to our channel, Niel. Scott Ritter asserts that Americans must recognize that democracy cannot be unilaterally defined by the United States and imposed on other nations. He suggests that the true essence of democracy emerges from the active participation of the people within their own democratic systems. Regarding Russia's recent election, while it may appear democratic on the surface, Ritter highlights the lack of genuine choice with only one viable candidate, Putin, and the other contenders essentially insignificant. He draws a parallel to the American electoral process, noting the limited options available to voters and the significant influence of unelected political parties in shaping the ballot. So caution is warranted when discussing limited choices, particularly in elections. In the case of the United States, there's often pride in the high level of engagement seen in the electoral process with notable voter turnouts and significant participation rates. Comparatively, in the recent Russian election, Vladimir Putin secured a substantial 88% of the vote, a figure that might seem unsurprising given the prevailing narrative about Russia. However, the high turnout of 77% among eligible voters challenges assumptions about suppression and lack of choice. This level of participation suggests a belief in the system itself, not just in the individual at the helm. At 71 years old, Putin's leadership raises questions about succession and potential stagnation, drawing historical parallels to previous eras of aging leadership in Russia. Conversations with Russian officials hint at impending changes, indicating a planned transition to a new generation of leaders. Despite concerns about Putin's authoritarian tendencies, his ability to navigate such transitions without upheaval suggests a degree of stability and confidence in the Russian democratic process, demonstrating its efficacy within the country's context. This argument presents a retrospective view, initially, underestimating Russia's capabilities and expecting sanctions to lead to its collapse. However, Russia has defied these expectations, instead strengthening its defense industry and amassing formidable military power, surpassing NATO in certain aspects. NATO's expansion, including the inclusion of Finland and Sweden, prompted Russia to bolster its forces significantly, signaling a strategic move. To justify their actions, some advocate for a return to the tactics of the Cold War era, aiming to engage Russia in an arms race to drain its resources, similar to what occurred in the 1970s and 80s. Yet this approach fails to acknowledge Russia's current advantage, putting the United States and NATO in a position of playing catch-up. Discussions within NATO indicate a shift towards a war-ready posture to bridge the gap. The looming prospect of a revitalized Russian strategic nuclear force underscores the urgency for modernization within the U.S. military, including investments in submarines, ICBMs, and bombers. However, such endeavors come with substantial financial costs, with the replacement missile program alone projecting expenses in the range of hundreds of billions of dollars, raising concerns about budget overruns and the need for rigorous oversight to avoid excessive spending. They've already surpassed their budget projections by 22%. I'm here to tell the American people that the replacement of the Minuteman 3 with a ballistic missile system will exceed a trillion dollars, and there are doubts about its effectiveness. Similarly, the costs associated with replacing the B-2 bomber and the Ohio-class submarines are likely to be much higher than anticipated with concerns about their functionality. The Pentagon's audits have revealed a troubling reality over a trillion dollars worth of equipment and funds cannot be properly accounted for. This level of mismanagement would be unacceptable in any business setting, yet it persists within the Defense Department and the defense industry, perpetuated by a cycle of corruption and political self-interest. The defense contracts aid packages often serve as disguised job creation programs rather than genuine efforts to support freedom-loving nations like Ukraine against Russian aggression. This realization prompts a critical question if America's economic prosperity hinges on perpetuating global conflict, who truly poses the greatest threat to international peace and security. The immense influence wielded by the United States over the global financial system, particularly through the dominance of the dollar and the extensive use of sanctions, underscores the complexities of geopolitics and economic power dynamics. The imposition of sanctions has disrupted both the United States and Russia's global economic posturing. Russia's accustomed ease of participation in international economic systems has been obstructed, forcing them to navigate new financial structures amidst ongoing adjustments. Despite facing challenges in this transition, Russia has demonstrated resilience, maintaining a growing economy that outpaces growth rates in the United States and Europe. This economic shift has compelled Russia to pursue two key objectives, self-sufficiency and the development of new markets. 
By diversifying its economic interactions, particularly with nations like China and India, Russia has created robust and expanding markets that offer greater potential than previous Western engagements. Notably, Russia's foray into these markets has often gone unnoticed by Western observers, highlighting a gap in understanding the full extent of Russia's economic strength and resilience. The upcoming St. Petersburg International Economic Forum aims to provide first-hand insight into Russia's economic prowess, offering an opportunity to engage directly with Russian officials and industry leaders to gain a comprehensive understanding of the country's economic landscape. This transparency invites scrutiny and dialogue, enabling observers to witness the strength of the Russian economy firsthand and engage in informed discussions about its trajectory. The situation involves what can be described as creative accounting. Funds were earmarked for a specific program, likely involving the direct provision of equipment. However, there was a lack of legally allocated equipment available for this purpose. To circumvent this discrepancy, there appears to have been an effort within the Pentagon to reclassify existing equipment as suitable for the intended program employing what can only be termed as creative accounting practices. This raises significant concerns about transparency and accountability within the Pentagon with implications for national security and taxpayer funds. If Congress were fulfilling its oversight-like duties, effectively, those responsible for such actions would be held accountable through rigorous questioning and documentation scrutiny. However, the lack of decisive action suggests a degree of complicity on the part of Congress in perpetuating misinformation and deception regarding matters of national importance. Furthermore, the human cost of conflicts like the one in Ukraine cannot be overlooked. Estimates suggest a staggering number of casualties, with hundreds of thousands dead and potentially millions more wounded. The displacement of populations further compounds the tragedy, leading to the potential depopulation of Ukraine and irreversible demographic shifts. Despite calls for assistance, the reality is that the conflict has inflicted immense suffering and threatens the very existence of the Ukrainian nation and its people. This sobering reality underscores the urgent need for diplomatic solutions and humanitarian aid to address the ongoing crisis and mitigate its devastating consequences. The Russian strategy appears to prioritize long-term persistence over short-term gains, recognizing the potential costs of engaging in a rapid, decisive conflict. Instead, they are likely to continue exerting pressure gradually, aiming to exhaust Ukrainian resources and resolve. There is skepticism regarding Ukraine's ability to sustain its efforts through the summer, with summer with some anticipating a significant collapse by May and the potential conclusion of the conflict by September. However, the situation could escalate dramatically if France intervenes militarily in Ukraine, potentially leading to a path towards nuclear confrontation. The prospect of French troop deployment raises concerns about NATO involvement and the risk of nuclear conflict, with implications for global stability. The decision by French President Macron to consider military intervention reflects not only the urgency of the situation, but also the frustration with the perceived lack of support from the United States. The diversion of resources and attention towards domestic political disputes in the US-US has left a void in international leadership, prompting European leaders to reassess their roles and responsibilities.